Hey, the popcorn <laughs> junkies are back. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And here we are with uh, Wes Anderson's ninth feature film. I love dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> Which, if you say, I it, love say dogs. it quickly, I love dogs. I love, I, love I, dogs, I, I love dogs, I love dogs, I love dogs. Do you think yeah. that's what he's playing on? I don't yeah. know. So it's not a classic live action film. It's his second stop motion animation, his first being the Fantastic Mr. Fox. And this is set in a futuristic dystopian Japan where a Japanese mayor of a fictional city decides that uh, all of the dogs need to be sort of exiled. Because mm. they have a, the, the dog flu, which, which can make them lash out. So you have this sort of strange sort of adventure whereby a Japanese boy tries to find, seek and rescue his dog. I'm a Wes Anderson fan. You two are Wes Anderson fans. Yeah. What were your, I wouldn't say you are necessarily, what were your expectations for the film? I think the Grand Budapest Hotel was the last film that he made and Whilst I really, really liked it, obviously, I did feel it was a bit too overstyled. But this one delivered on the Wesness. His other films are quite stylized to the point of almost, I, I say, ironing out the humour and the humanity yeah. from a film. I wasn't disappointed at all. I feel there could have been a bit more of the dog's humour, and I felt they only included the comedy, comic bits. Um, that they had in the trailer and I think there could have been a bit more of that but they also delivered on all the other elements it was also really sad and it showed love between humans family and dogs no I, I thought it was, I really liked it I think I've only seen Fantastic Mr Fox but I really loved that film and how many times have you seen it <laughs> like 10 <laughs> times and what is um, it that you liked about Mr Fantastic Fox that you were expecting to get in this film I love the animation. I don't know what it is, there's something about it. It's so a real fair, I yeah, think, because you see it's it like kind moves. of rustle around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's got that movement, but... And it's like, there's something to do with their eyes, the way they're constantly moving. And the way that the dog's eyes moved in this was really realistic, like you really believed that they were a dog. And I was saying to Dad when we came out of the cinema, it's really weird because the animation and the way that the humans move is almost emotionless, but at the same time filled with emotion. So true. It's yeah. funny They're how... really like formal, the way they move. It's really straight on and then they walk to the side and then they walk like this. But I, I just really love the way that that's done. On my expectations for the film, I had a lot of um, worries about it because some of Fan Mr. Fantastic Fox I liked, but it lost me. And some of it can be a bit, I find the way that he shoots stuff and the way that he sort of Flat, like you said, irons out. He tends to iron out feeling somehow for me in Fantastic Fox. So I was really apprehensive about this. And I thought, mm, have we seen all the funny lines in the trainer, trailer? But no, I found the dogs hilarious. Mm. I love the dry wit. I mean, there is a scene where he actually managed to transmit to us an awkward moment that was so human, but between dogs, it made me laugh out loud. No, no, I, I, I found it funny, but I thought that all the laughs were kind of at the beginning of the film and they should have been oh, evened no, out a little I bit. I don't agree with that. Do you too. not? No, because we had, no. we had those moments with the little pug and stuff later on in the no, film. No, no, but it was like there were really good funny bits. Yeah, it was stronger. The where, they were, where it was I just the, ma the main dogs. But I 100% I was... agree with you, Maddie. Yeah. I, think it, I think the first 50 minutes of the film Mm. was very rich and we were bouncing between the story mm. of the boy and his rescue of the dog and the dogs and then it was really odd there seemed to be a good 15 minute period of the film where we just almost left the dogs completely mm. and I that. really really yeah, felt and, the loss of that and because yeah. you know the title of the film is I love dogs I thought we were gonna have more of them being on the trash land than we did I felt towards the end I still loved every minute mm. of it but I mm. felt towards the end it was too much with the humans and I still wanted more yeah. of the dogs. I agree. It's funny because I felt more emotion from animated dogs than I did in the Grand Budapest or any of, like, you know, That's like, weirdly, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. those awkward moments that you mm. were saying about Nadia. And then, you know, I, like, cried, mm. but not from a human, from yeah. the dog moment. Yeah. You don't even like dogs. No. I know, well... You're not a dog lover, though, are you? You, you say you hate Toffee and <laughs> <laughs> I, 
some dogs. Dogs that are obedient. <laughs> no, but, no, but what I mean is, say by that, you are not a soppy. I'm not a soppy. Brit, no, I'm not no, you're not British a soppy. dog no, lover. Not, I mean, I like dogs, but I'm yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not like yeah. So the fact that he was able to draw Get me from to you, know, yeah, but. It was those the way they welled up with tears. I know. I, oh, I love the way they did the tears. I don't know. I just so was there in the emotions. A question that kept bugging me all the way through it: Why have we? Why yeah. did we have a Japanese setting? It's not that it didn't work, and it's not that it didn't throw up its own wit and observations. And I get the sort of references to, to the tsunami. And but, but is it why? because? Is it because? And I don't know anything about films really. But is it because Japanese art lends itself to his sort of? Well, he's, he's sort of cleanly flat, sort of. I don't need to describe what well, he says. He says he's very influenced by Japanese filmmakers like Kurosawa and Ozu. I I, well, I was left thinking it was a design choice. I thought the I, text I looked think, really yeah, good. Yeah, but I so was style. India, and I think he did that really well. We all enjoyed a lot of the humans spoken parts being untranslated yeah, Japanese I liked that. because you were then really enjoying being the an on the animals side yes. as well. Um, well, there's that lovely line yeah. which is in the trailer where it says, Does I wish anyone someone what? spoke his language. Wish someone spoke his language. Yeah, yeah. yeah it I might have been a way for us to help us understand dogs Submerged. more than yeah. yourselves, yeah. more yeah. In, an, in a lost in translation kind of. If you saw it written down, okay, a large part of this film is going to be in Japanese, you're not going to be able to understand a word. With no subtitles. Please don't be put off by that because I would have been. Yeah. And actually, it's not how you would imagine. It does bring you closer to the dog mm. and it lets you almost have what you want to be that character to be saying. He's definitely drawn to that very structured, flat way in which Japanese art and Japanese theatre, if you think of the, even the um, sumo wrestlers, I would describe the animation in it as exquisite mm. in its attention to detail. Mm. And there were moments like the Roiling Sea, which was made of this beautiful glitter. And for me, one of the most astonishing sets moments was, I think they were in, a, in a, an underground cave or cage and you didn't see their faces. They were all in silhouette talking to each yeah. other. Yeah. And you have the, the, you have the softened cake. glass I was bottle. Really, look, I really oh, enjoyed yeah. that as What's like an actual cinematic scene, which you wouldn't expect from an animation. Yeah. And that, that care and attention that he does have. I love the character of the little boy, the pilot boy. Oh, I loved him. He was so adorable. Yeah. I, I loved him because it wasn't in any way twee or sugary or Hollywood. He was quite a gruff little boy. He wasn't particularly mm. winsome. It's because he had a screwdriver in his head. He yeah. <laughs> had. But he was just a wacky, determined little boy. And then so then when those eyes welled up, and when oh, the dog's so eyes cool, welled up, your heart just melted. And you thought, mm. hang on a minute, this is stop animation. This is all, these aren't real living things. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Because by the end of the film, you really believe that they're real. You did. Real. Yeah. Yeah. You did. living creatures. And it was a particular type of stop frame animation on their faces. It was plastic dolls, which yeah. I've never seen before. Loved it. Sort of. Loved it because they had I mean, almost made... a light to them, they had a luminescence. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The but lumen. they mainly, he mainly Luminosity. gritted his teeth as well, didn't he? Yeah, he was he mainly like, gritted his teeth. Yeah, that was a just like those funny moments. Where... <laughs> yeah. I love, did you love all the detail to the dog's teeth? Because yeah. they yeah, had these terrible Yeah, some of them had like, like missing, yeah, yeah, yeah. broken teeth. I mean. And then I liked that detail of military issues. I love the villains. I mean, I love the, they were the, good. Sort of the, the good dictator good. and yeah. you know, and getting out of the bath and yeah. he turns around and he's got a cat tattooed on his back. They were like old Bond villains, really? right? Yeah, to the point where he had the cat on his lap. Now, I know he's coming for a little bit of stick. What about the girl being sort of Western? I did think that thing. I was actually frustrated by that. Mm. I didn't feel it was needed. I, I like didn't her. really like the girl. You guys said you liked her, but I didn't really like her. I liked her. I, I liked her energy, but I didn't see why she couldn't have been a Japanese girl. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. That's, that's the thing yeah. I didn't understand. So suddenly bring the blue-eyed, blue yeah. blonde-haired girl. It was odd. But, but do you know what I worry about us even saying this? Because we have, the whole world has gone mad in that we are watching the detail of the... I mean, this is an incredibly sympathetic film. So much of it is in Japanese and we're left to understand what we want. And yet we go to, oh, why did you choose a blonde haired girl? Yes, no. I don't think it was politically correctly perfect. I loved the scientist with, played by Yoko Ono. Oh. <laughs> 
and I don't want to give a spoiler, oh, yeah. but but where she ends up, yeah. I just thought mm -hmm. I've never seen that in a cartoon yes. and the way that our whole face and everything yes. changed. I liked the male it's, scientists as well. Yeah. 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 It was all in the animation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Watch out for both those characters. Human, and that yeah. wonderful moment where they all made a toast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you think it's a science. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what about, the, I mean, obviously, the dog characters. I mean, we've oh got a God. host of famous I names in there. Say... Brian Cranston, Ed Norton. Can I just Bill say Murray. with that? Can I just say with that? Because when we saw the trailer, I was so excited mm. by all those names. And I couldn't believe it that I was about... 10 minutes from the end of the film and I suddenly went, oh my God, right. who are all the stars? Hadn't tried yeah. to I, hadn't, I hadn't tried to peg thought them about to it. each other. And usually I, I'm a bit obsessed with that when I see a film, and, an, an animated film, and I know there's yeah, famous yeah, person. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah. But maybe that's a, cr a credit to the film. That credit. is a credit, yeah, yeah definitely. Well, definitely. I think the only um, one I noticed was Brian Cranston as chief. Scarlett Johansson played the sexy dog. I think she so, definitely yeah. did, yeah. yeah. It wasn't and she was great, wasn't she? Not Meg. I was at first listening listening out for, that's Brian Cranston, oh, is that Bill Murray? And, and so then it becomes the guessing game that happens with animations. And then they became so successful as an ensemble group of dogs mm -hmm. that when we were talking in the car, who was your favorite dog? I simply couldn't answer because I thought yeah. the way they interacted and that moment of awkwardness, social awkwardness that they all had together, mm -hmm. just through the flick of an eye like, and a look yeah. around, I mean, yeah, you I, did it so I well. thought it was, I thought they were perfect. And it's they all had mm. such amazing personalities. Yeah. Like, individual ones though, none that's of them the thing. were the same. I want a pet dog, one of them dogs. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, That's yeah, the yeah, dog yeah, that yeah. I want. Well, I thought <laughs> one of the lovely things about the whole film was it made me reevaluate and re-cherish our dogs. Yeah. Toffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like Kiki said in the trailer of you, um, it was like, she, she loves how delicate the voices are. Like that scene with Nutmeg and Chief, mm. the way that they're talking is really soft. Yeah. And it's one level and it's really calming. And I thought all of their voices were like that the whole way through. Like they mm. don't go insane. Yeah, he never gets hysterical with, with Anderson no. films. It fits it? in with well, the animation. Well, there'll be one hysterical moment in the entire yeah. Like, yeah. few hours. That Maybe he, when he was growing up, he didn't like shouty people. And again, so for animation fans, it's an absolute cornucopia yeah. of joy, isn't it? I mean, every single shot, he's as inventive with them walking across set with those like the silhouettes yeah, I as, he is, as he is with them moving across in the cable car. There's a sort of extra consideration, even more than I thought with the Fantastic Mr. Fox. I just thought yeah, was... but that's what I love about his films. Like you can watch them however many times and every time you'll notice something different. Yeah, and this one you're going to watch it over and over yeah. and over. And I was, trying to, I was trying to observe my own ruler, watch the, what's going on in the background all the time. And every time yeah, I saw heaven. something in one background, there was another background. Yeah. I was like, oh, I missed something over there. Really? Where didn't it succeed? I thought, I, 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 my one area where, I, well, mine's a weird one, I thought it didn't succeed because I thought it was going to be too long and then it wrapped up just at the right point. No, I thought yeah. it was a perfect time. Yeah. A perfect Which end. doesn't often happen nowadays with films. I no. sometimes feel like I'm like, yeah. now end. Yeah. Now end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End. <laughs> end. Uh, I disagree. Yeah. I, for me, it was 10 minutes too long. Oh. oh that's interesting. Could have really? had 10 minutes too long. I don't think of that. But in so an ideal was, world. It, it's the same as Dad. It was about halfway through and I was thinking, I hope the endings, I, I hope they close it well and at the right time, but I think they did perfectly. Mm -hmm. Did it deliver on our expectations? I'm gonna say that I wasn't as excited as I was letting on. Okay, okay. I okay. think because I was really excited for Grand Budapest and I felt a little bit let down by that. Right, so I think okay. my expectations were definitely lowered, but I feel like he's he's gotten me back up oh, on, on liking it. And I'm wanting to rewatch all of his films again. Oh good. So that's I'd say that's why my expectations were like above Mm. <laughs> so you're back on the Wes Anderson bus? I am, I'm on the wagon again. Okay, yeah. mm. cool. What about you, Matt? Did it live up to? Yeah, definitely. Wes wagon. <laughs> yeah, the Wes wagon. <laughs> I haven't seen, I need to see his other films though, because I only, yeah, we should I've do only like seen them. Yeah, but I, I really want to rewatch <laughs> Fantastic Mr. <Mister Yeah. laughs> only because there are a lot of really good dog scenes in that as well. <laughs> yes. And I think it would be interesting <laughs> seeing the dogs in that one too. Well, for me, it exceeded my expectations. Oh, I think I went in um, worried that it would be a bit, would be a bit flat for me. But I thought it was fabulous, and there's so much hard work mm. put into it. Yeah. Thank so you for mm. all your graft. I like laughed and cried though. Yeah. yeah, same. I've always found Wes Anderson a little bit, how do you put it in a sort of politically correct way, sort of a little bit emotionless. 
He can be very witty and very funny and very stylistic, but sometimes there's just a Style human... There's a, no, there's a humanistic element that's just slightly missing, so that even the humour is happening in a bit of a kind of strangely sort of straight-faced, mannered sort of way. I just think it's dry. I don't think it is dry. It is dry. So I went, but I, that's what I went. In, I went in thinking, okay, Wes, well, you need to like you. You need to kind of really, you've got to deliver it. Yeah, it's, yeah the killer puncher. And for me, it, it succeeded. I felt for ten minutes. The ten minutes you think should have been cut out were the ten minutes they weren't on the island. That's yeah. what I think should have been cut out. And I think if you did that, it would be an eye on perfect distraction of the film. And there was something about the tears that just made you oh, want to cry. I felt, oh, and my, yeah. I welled I up every time was. they welled up. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so watery that it was like... Yeah. And you're right, and in a, in a weird way, despite the slightly unemotional way in which they cried, it was mm. very emotional. Coming to our, our scores on the doors, mm, okay. shall we start with... I've never done this. Oh my God, so... Our first time! Summing up, <laughs> let's go with... Well, seeing as it's your first time, what No, no, you I want to oh, right. compare myself. I, I, okay. I want to I kind of position myself position to me. you guys. Okay, so Maddie, what would you give this film out of 10 and why? 9.5. Wow, okay, that's big. And um, the reason it wasn't a 10 would probably be because there wasn't enough of the dogs on the actual land. So yeah. And I'll go, because I agree yeah. with you, like 9.5, but yeah. Thinking back on it, I could have done with a whole heap more dogs. More dogs. <laughs> more dogs. Mm. More dogs. Oh, well, I, I'm not one for liking the spin-offs like the penguins in Madagascar. But if there's a spin-off with the dogs, I want yeah, it. Same. I really want more of the dogs. I mean, I mm, and I can't sense. give it 10 out of 10 because I didn't get enough of the dogs. Yeah. I, I could have just mm. got more and more. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. <sighs> exactly what I was going to give it. 8 out of 10. And I did think it was a superb film. Mm. And I would absolutely recommend yeah. people go and see it. But for me, recommend to a friend. And that's, yes. a, big, that's a big deal for you. Because yeah. it's not the kind of film you would have yeah. looked at on paper. No. Yeah.